What's up guys? We are back today with, gotta do a little bit of work on skid mark. Um, you saw yesterday on the test drive that the temperature gauge was all over the freaking place and we don't know why, but I have no clue how this thing was maintained previously and probably wasn't by the way the truck looks. So noticed a couple things yesterday, the fan clutches seized, so we're gonna change that. And then while we're in here, we're gonna do a thermostat and then, um, gonna do the water pump and got to figure out the charging issue with the alternator because it's not charging so um, I'm gonna go ahead and start on the water pump so we went ahead and drained most of the coolant and disconnected this upper radiator hose then we pulled these heater hoses off because we're gonna blow some air through there and get all the crap out of the heater core but um, yeah like anything I disconnect the battery before I start and drain the coolant but we are going to go ahead and get started now to get the belt off you have to release the pressure. Now this guy down here is your belt tensioner and it has a spring in there that keeps tension on the belt so it doesn't slip, but in order to relax it, you have to put a ratchet on it. So there's a little square down there that the ratchet drive fits into. So you go ahead and pull on the belt on the ratchet and it'll let you get the belt off and then you let it go and it goes ahead and relaxes. Now, sometimes the tensioner will Relax quite a bit and you want to make sure that it doesn't put your freaking fingers into the fan or anything undesirable so Got that off Go ahead and get the belt out of the way. Not sure if we're gonna have to take the fan off right now I mean, we probably should but we're gonna go ahead and Get that belt out of the way now to do the water pump is literally looks like two bolts and um, we're gonna follow the whole process and Go ahead and get this guy off. So I'm going to go ahead and get some tools and we'll proceed from here. All right, so what we're going to do is take, sorry, it's dark. I need to fix the lighting in this stupid building. These little rechargeable lights from Harbor Freight are freaking awesome. So just get on that bolt and try not to cut your hand open on the radiator fan. that one and we don't know like I said we don't know the condition of how this thing was maintained so we're just gonna do everything and assume it wasn't because we don't want to be going down the road trying to have some fun and make some excellent content for you guys and find out the hard way that we should have so what I normally do is like when I'm when I'm doing shit like this I'll just fast forward it or I'll just actually mute it and speed it up so you'll hear like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. and then it's done. Cause no one wants to watch me fucking unscrew bolts. Dude, this does kind of suck, huh? Now apparently the thermostat's weird. Is it in there sideways? Like What's that? Yeah, it's in there sideways, but the tow hook makes up part of the water jacket. Oh. So. If anyone's looking for some help in your shop, these little Harbor Freight carts are freaking great. Set all sorts of crap on it, never have any issues with it. And it holds quite a bit of weight too. You got things on there. I mean, this water pump was uh, 30 bucks or something. Yes, it's from O'Reilly's, but whatever, they're easy enough to change, I could care less. I mean, nothing but the best for this truck. So I'm gonna go get a pry bar and we're gonna pop that off. Okay, the pry bar. And like that. Wow. Piece of cake. That was easy. Oh, that's not bad. Could probably put that back in. Funny, oh, that's not bad. funny looking little bugger. Well, it's out, so we're putting a new one in. Hope I didn't poke a hole in the radiator right now. That would suck. Mm -hmm. I didn't plan on the pump falling out like that, but. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get the new pump. Now what I'm gonna do before I install it is wipe this down a little bit and clean up the mating surface there so it's a little bit more presentable. All right, while we are waiting for the correct water pump to show up, we are going to replace the thermostat. And to replace the thermostat, you have to remove the alternator. So we will do, I think this alternator is questionable, so we'll replace this at a later time, but we're gonna go ahead and just take it off and put it to the side. So the first thing you need to do, 
Ours has this extra little wire, which, you know, some people ask what it is. It's an actual tack to, so we can see, you know, the engine RPMs and it's got this little pickup in here that, um, you know, the, uh, that basically picks up the alternator spinning and gives you a tack signal, which is cool. So you can actually keep track of what it's doing. But for all intents and purposes, we're not going to screw with that right now. But what we are going to screw with is taking the alternator off. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the tools. All right. So next step on removal of the thermostat. We will take these two, is that the same? It should be the same size. God only knows what they did on this stupid truck though. We'll take these top bolts out. I know, and I stole the battery for the ratchet. Right. I still need it for that. <laughs> yeah, a little, it's cool that we have a tack in here. Yeah. Just, Sucks that the truck runs like garbage. But hey, cheap Cummins, what? Honestly, cheapest 12 uh, <laughs> I've seen in a while. Or 17. Yeah, cheapest one I've seen in a while. And it's or ugly as heck, and I like it, so the haters can eat one. Well, especially after we got all the nastiness out of it. Add some some go fast parts. Cheap go fast parts, hopefully. Yeah. That's where eBay and Amazon's gonna come in handy. I'm excited for that. Is there Let's one see. More? Is there? Let me see. Yeah, there's one right in the bottom. Just that? Yeah, just one more. Yeah, go ahead. If you need a shallow okay, cool. Is there no room to turn it? Careful, it might strip and pop your knuckles. Ooh, is it loosening up? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, you don't wanna. Always be aware of what you're loosening into because you'll punch something hard and it'll destroy your knuckles. Do you need a little extension? I actually need a shorter one. Shorter what? Um, oh, are you hitting? Yeah, because it hits right here. And we're really happy with this little truck. I'm just stoked it like has an intercooler. You know, this generation did not come with an intercooler, these first ones, but I mean, this is like the first, <laughs> I never seen this intercooler kit, you know, on, I've seen a picture of one once, but I've never seen it actually in use. And the fact that we freaking bought a truck with it is pretty awesome. Cause otherwise it would just have a black crossover right here that goes into there. And so it's non intercooled. So you can't fuel it as hard without getting high EGTs and not fun stuff. So go ahead and support that. Yeah, this is going to look all funny in here. Is it loose? Let's see. Yeah, it's loose. You got it? Yep. Now on the later Cummins, the thermostat's right on the top and it just comes out and goes that way to the radiator hose. But this is a funky little setup right here. It's actually the first 12 of I've ever had. Work on them all the time, but never owned one. Look at that, you clean all these bolts up. Oh, all right, can take that fella off. Oh. Oh, I was hoping it would be in a bunch of pieces. Hmm. Oh, dude, remember how the water was staying in there? There's mm -hmm. no bleeder hole. Oh yeah. That's why it's just chilling there. Yep, I can dump this out in the sink. Yeah, dude. Or here, um, yeah, that's fine. All right, go and just dump this in the coolant bucket. Cool, man. So yeah, this is out and we will go ahead and get the new one and start reassembly. Okay, so we got our new thermostat now. Like I said, this is a cheapo aftermarket one, but we're gonna put it in anyway because cheapo aftermarket stuff is good enough for this truck. But what this one doesn't have that the Cummins one will is the little, the little brass bleeder holes. And well, I don't know, I know it does on the, on the later ones, but anyway, I don't have a Cummins one to look at, so figure it out. Um, <laughs> so what I did is I drilled a tiny little hole right here. And what that hole does is it helps get trapped air out because if air is trapped behind this thermostat, then the head's full of air and it can cause a lot of problems. Granted, it'll, it can bleed out of here through the heater core and everything, but I don't even want to have to deal with that. So we're going to go ahead and put this back in. So we'll do 
So it goes up like that. So we're gonna go ahead and put the bleeder hole at the top. And our handy dandy yes, is this end towards thermostat and that end is indeed going towards the thermostat. And then go ahead and put it back. Should have been this one, let's see. That looks too damn long. There we go. That's more appropriate. Okay. Uh oh. It's never good when you drop, drop crap and don't hear it hit the floor. But these old trucks have so much room under the hood that you're kind of hard pressed to lose stuff on them. But the later ones, yeah, those aren't the best. Mm -hmm. Let me get this one started, then you can go ahead and have at it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and tighten this up. All right, so thermostat is in. Now we're going to put the alternator back on. Get the bracket. Okay, take the bracket. Put this upper one, dang it. Magnetized everything. That was the yeah. longer one there, huh? The other two are for the water pump. Go on there. This alternator is being grumpy because it knows it's going to get replaced. Right. We still need to clean all this other debris and crap out of here. So go ahead and thread this nut on. And then we'll tighten these. Okay, well, we're clean the water pump mounting surface on the block now. I'm going to put a little bit of dielectric grease on this gasket doesn't tell you to but never hurts to help a gasket seal a little bit better there we go now see this will go on the bottom okay. this is what's called a weep hole so because it has this little passage that goes into the bearing and the seal. So when the seal goes bad, the water will pee out that hole and you'll know, hey, there's a problem. So you always put it on the bottom. Did you get it all the way in there? Yep. And she's all greased. Careful we don't roll it. And then, yeah, just... I know, dude, getting, getting it in between the blades is like the hardest part about changing it. Yeah. Oh, normally some people take the fan off. Not us. Why? There's no reason. This is nice, man. A lot easier than changing the water pump on a Super Duty or something. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Wish we do those two. Super Duty water pumps and other not fun ones, but I'd much rather do like 20 of these. Then these are just cool motors and just archaic dinosaur technology, but they just have so much potential. So we went ahead and snaked the belt back on and we're going to, here, let me, let me put it on the water pump and we can loop it around the alternator. Okay. Ready? Yep. Oops. Oh, I need to pull down. Yep. Keep going. Almost. Yep. Sweet. So. Ah, crap. Stuck over here. Can you, uh... Yeah, that one. Alright. Cool. Ooh. Alright. 
the belt is on. And guys, be real careful with your radiator because all you got to do is tap it with a wrench and you get a hole in it. So anyway, that is done. So we went ahead and uh, blew some air through the heater core line and into a jug and there wasn't a bunch of debris in it, which is nice. It's saying that the engine is a uh, cooling system somewhat clean. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put the clamps back on and we'll start to fill it. Okay, so one side of the heater core is on, heater core line, then this one's a little bit higher up, so we're gonna go ahead and fill until we start seeing it out of there, and then we'll go ahead and finish. So we'll go ahead and get the coolant. Okay, now all we're gonna do is just let it sit here and warm up and watch the level in the radiator. It might bubble over a little bit, but we're just going to make sure that there's enough in here. But we got a new water pump. We got new thermostat, new gaskets, and new coolant. So this should be good to go. Get it ready because we didn't know the concentration of the coolant. And it's obviously been freezing here. So that's not the best thing. But yeah, she's doing her smoky warm up. So we'll uh, keep you posted and let you know what we find. It's just gonna basically be 10 minutes of us destroying the environment right here, so there's nothing too exciting about it. Okay, this is how you change a fan clutch on a 12 valve Cummins. Now we got our crappy 12 valve Cummins skid mark, and we had it warm. We were trying to warm it up after doing a thermostat and a water pump on it, but the fan clutch is completely locked, so the truck will not warm up. So on this one, it is backwards thread. So you find, take your air hammer or wrench, however, and you find a nice land on one of the, on the fan clutch nut and hit it. Not like that, better. Come on. So it is righty loosey, lefty tighty. And when you do this, Make sure that you hold on to the dang thing, because if it falls and the metal fan blade hits the radiator, then guess what? You get to buy a radiator, and this one will probably burn me because the truck's hot. So just try to support it best you can. And this fan clutch was so locked up that you could not turn the fan separately when the truck was off. So either someone pulled the pin on it or it just failed, because normally when fan clutches fail, they freewheel but not this one for whatever reason. So it's getting getting pretty close. I mean, this is a lot easier without a shroud, but it also looks like it wants to eat your fingers. So we're probably gonna put a shroud on this thing. So bring it up. And that is disgusting. And it looks like this has failed a long, long time ago. So what you do, take the four bolts out, pull the fan off, Put the four bolts back in, set the fan in there, spin it the opposite direction you took it off, and you've changed your fan clutch. See you on the next one, guys. Thanks.